In today's episode, you're going to be hearing from a gentleman named Patrick Lennon, and we're going to be talking about podcast advertising. So I thought it would be a really great time to uh, tell you about a new podcast advertising model that we are actually deploying for this show that you're listening to, B2B Growth. Uh, we have started partnering with B2B Brands. And instead of doing the traditional kind of 15 second or 30 second ad spot or even the mid roll ad, uh, we're partnering with sponsors and actually building entire episodes around the success stories of our sponsors customers. And so uh, we recently partnered with Bound, uh, bound360.com, and we've done three, uh, we'll be doing three interviews with their customers. And so uh, it's it's been a really effective model. I feel like it adds value to the listener to hear real success stories from customers that are using, you know, the litany of, of MarTech solutions that are on the market today, but it also helps the sponsor by allowing their customer to do their marketing for them. And so if you are a, you represent a B2B brand looking to dip your toe in podcast advertising, uh, we would love to chat with you uh, to see if there's some synergy there and possibly feature your customers' stories on this show on B2B Growth. Uh, we're getting just a, right around 50,000 downloads every month. Uh, our listeners are uh, B2B marketing leaders, CMOs, VPs of marketing, uh, agency CEOs, we would love to to partner with you. So shoot me an email, james at sweetfishmedia.com. And here is our episode with Patrick Lennon. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm Jonathan Green. And I'm James Carberry. Let's get it into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. We are here today with Patrick Lennon. He is the co-founder of Veritone One. Patrick, how are you doing today? Doing great, thank you. I'm really excited to chat with you today, Patrick. We're going to be talking really about offline marketing brands, specifically with podcasts. This is a space that you and uh, your team are very familiar with. Uh, excited to dive in uh, to that with you, but, but to give our listeners a little bit of context, can you explain what is Veritone One? What are you guys uh, all about? What are you and your team doing over there? Sure, thank you. So Veritone One is a full service media buying agency. Um, however, we do have a technology division, which is Veritone, which is publicly traded, um, and that technology platform allows visibility and optimization that really hasn't been seen before in terms of offline media, and that, that's considered radio, television, YouTube, and podcast. So we handle everything from direct response television to audio to podcast to YouTube, and we do it for some of the biggest e-commerce brands out there, many of which your listeners use every day, like Uber or WordPress on websites or LinkedIn when you're you know using LinkedIn. So we, we use a, you know, a plethora of different media types, and um, and we scale campaigns to a to an effective CPA. I love it. So Patrick, in in diving more into that, we're going to talk specifically about podcasting and some of the results that you guys are seeing at a high level there. When it comes to the media buying for for podcasting, what have you found to be the the variables that really make for a successful you know podcasting campaign from an advertising perspective? Yeah, good question. And podcasting is sort of a phenomenon because there's no limit in sight in terms of how much content can be put into the universe. So new content is coming out every day. We manage between 400 and 600 shows a week, podcast integrations. And what we do is we target, we first take internal research. So we check all the boxes of all the internal research, you know, items that we have from PodTrack to all the different you know, research tools to make sure that we're talking to the right demographic, we're talking to the right consumer, whether it's B2B, B2C, et cetera, et cetera. Then once we do that, we take internal research. And internal research tells us we spend tens of millions of dollars on podcasts, and we understand sort of what works, what doesn't work to a CPA, to a demographic. So sometimes a show might look wonderful on paper, an NPR show, let's say, on podcasting, but we know based on creative restrictions, based on what NPR will boil allow you to do, um, whether it's a pre-roll ad, a mid-roll ad, or a post-roll ad, 
all those things come into play in terms of driving an effective CPA for, for campaigns. We're seeing a lot of growth, a lot of success with B2B and have you know, been doing this now with LegalZoom for 15 years in radio and now moving them into more podcasts just because the, the space is so fruitful for kind of efficient CPAs. I, I love it. We've we've started bringing on more sponsors, uh, specifically a lot of Martech companies, uh, because our audience is made up of B two B marketers, and so uh, this is this is a area that I'm very interested in. As far as the measurement, you, you said that you know they're performing really well. What are some of the metrics that you guys are using to measure success of a B two B brand's podcast advertising campaign? Sure. So every every client we have has different success metrics, KPIs call them. So whether it's a CPA to a new install to whether it's a free trial, it just it really depends on what that client's metrics are. We have real-time dashboards that allow our team to intake from uh, you know, a number of different methods data from our clients. So we can literally turn results around from unique landing pages. So when we go into a podcast campaign, traditionally podcasters have sort of branded podcasting with a unique URL. Um, mm-hmm. So that's called indirect. So indirect okay. attribution will tell us how many unique visitors came to a, you know, to a site. Let's, let's say it's legalzoom.com slash NPR or legalzoom.com slash Adam Carolla. Well, yeah. Then we know based on the traffic that's coming into that unique URL, what our cost per uniques are what our conversions, we can follow that consumer all the way through the funnel. We can see what lifetime value looks like. We can see what average order value looks like. Then we capture the indirect on the website. So the main site of you know, LegalZoom.com, we might have a different method of capture there, whether it's a survey, whether there's a lot of different ways we capture within either pre or post survey. Mm-hmm. So we have different methods of doing it. And then our analytics team, we have a full analytics team, devises a a collaboration between each client so they're comfortable with the measurement tactics. And then we optimize on a day-to-day basis, on a week-to-week basis, and then we, we cut those shows that aren't working and we add the shows that are working. I love it. I love it. Can you speak, Patrick, a little bit to sort of the creative element of you know, mm-hmm. what makes a podcast ad, uh, from your experience, what makes it successful? So creative creative speaks to each host, right? And a mistake oftentimes is taking one creative and dispersing it amongst, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 hosts and saying, okay, each influencer speaks the same way. We have unique copy that's actually drafted for podcasters because podcast, you know, each host reads differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, some like copy points, some like scripts, some like more banter. So, so there's just, there's just a different variety of them. We have a full creative team. We have podcast writers that just write for podcast medium, for the podcast medium, so they know sort of how to speak in that language. So it really depends. I mean, certain brands are more of an integration in terms of a banter with a creative, and some some hosts will read it straight, you know, from the script. Not not that one host reading from a script doesn't do as well as a host that is more banter, Mm -hmm. but, you know, each host does it differently. Got it. Uh, so Patrick, if there's somebody listening to this right now and they're thinking, okay, I've been hearing a lot of people talk about you know, podcast advertising, you know, I've, I've been hearing some success stories, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm brand new to this. Are there any kind of words of wisdom or kind of maybe mistakes that you see brands making when they, when they venture into podcast advertising that you would warn them about to the person who maybe hasn't done it yet, but they're about to step into kind of doing their first campaign? It's a good question. I think the the thing that we we recently did a, a study that showed if a client comes in and spends less than seventy five thousand dollars over three months, and typically what we tell clients is spend between seventy five thousand and one hundred and twenty five thousand over three to four months. Okay. And literally a three x more success model comes when people spend that amount of money because we've taken tests that are fifty that are twenty five. Mm-hmm. And they're three times more likely to succeed in scale if they spend between seventy five and one twenty five. So the goal here is not from an agency standpoint to get more budget because any agency that has the right depth behind it is upside down on a test. They lose money. Mm-hmm. So between manpower, between negotiations, everything that we do. So it's really to not get a false negative on the channel because you need to have enough inventory out there and enough shows out there 
to optimize and to get enough of a read because shows are, you know, they take a while to work sometimes. So I would say don't spend too little, but don't spend too much. Okay. That is uh, that is a fantastic piece of advice. It's super, uh, super specific. And so I really appreciate you sharing that insight with us, Patrick. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we, it, we walked away from clients and said, just save your money. I mean, yeah. we don't, at the end of the day, we, we keep clients, you know, for 10, 15 years, you know, because we treat it like it's our money. And we just, we've seen too many people come in and say, okay, I want to spend $10,000. And we say, stay in digital, stay yeah. in print, yeah. you know, where you can actually track it. There's so much breakage in what we do. You have to really invest the time and, and, uh, and resources in it. That, that makes perfect sense. Is there, there anything else related to podcast advertising, Patrick, that, that you think our audience should know before, uh, before I get into our last question today? Yeah, yeah. I would just say that podcasting is changing a bit in dynamically inserted ads versus embedded. So the way podcasts first started was embedded ads would live within a show for perpetuity. So hypothetically, let's say, you know, Alec Baldwin on Here's the Thing, which is an NPR podcast. Five years ago, if that show was running, that ad that he read, that he interviewed Michael Douglas, let's say, would stay forever. Your ad would stay in there. Okay. Nowadays, what they're doing, the bigger shows are doing it already. About 40% of shows are doing it. It's dynamically inserted, so you're buying impressions. Okay. So basically, the ad's still read by an Alec Baldwin, let's say, but what happens is as soon as you get your agreed upon number of impressions, your ad is removed and a new ad is put in. So be aware of dynamically inserted, be aware of uh, embedded versus dynamically inserted. We'd like to have embedded because embedded works better because it has a longer shelf life and you get drag. Okay. So uh, that's one thing also, you know, be, be weary of buying just pre-roll beginning of an ad, beginning okay. of a show or post is something that you should really be buying almost at no charge or getting okay. it for a very low amount of money. Okay. So those are you know, just some high level topics or high level. Uh, so so mid roll kind of mid roll host red ads are really what, what brands should be focused on. Those are the best. You know, those are, that's the prime inventory because you have a consumer that really doesn't even know it's an ad, but pre-roll you skip through and post roll people have checked out. I mean, there's value there, but it's just, you know, you got to be able to measure the value by, by, by what you're paying for it. All right, Patrick. Well, this, uh, this has been fantastic. Uh, I, I want to close with one last question, which, uh, you know, is, is a question that I've, I've been asking my guests in the last few weeks. I've been loving the responses I've been hearing, but Patrick, what is the legacy that you'd like to leave? You know, I'm unique in the sense that, you know, I started the media agency side of the business when I lost my vision. So I'm blind. I have a little bit of vision in my right eye, so I'm legally blind. So I've started foundations and done different things for the blind and low vision. And I think the legacy I'm, I'd like to leave is that anybody can do anything if you work hard and, uh, you know, that, you know, you, you don't give up. So I think maybe there's a legacy there, so but I think at the end of the day, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot people don't do because they just give up. Yeah. Oh man. That, that was a fascinating story. I had, I had no idea that you had lost your sight. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Patrick, if, if somebody is listening to this, they want to stay connected with you. They want to learn sure. more about uh, Veritone One. What's the best way for them to go about doing that? Just hit me on LinkedIn, Patrick, last name, L-E-N-N-O-N, Veritone. You, you can find me pretty easily. Or feel free to shoot me an email to Patrick at Veritone, V-E-R-I-T-O-N-E-O-N-E.com. And I'll, uh, I'll get right back to you. And uh, thank you for the, thanks for the chat today. No problem, Patrick. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Ed. Bye-bye. To ensure that you never miss an episode of the B2B Growth Show, subscribe to the show on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. This guarantees that every episode will get delivered directly to your device. If you or someone you know would be an incredible guest for the B2B Growth Show, email me at jonathan at sweetfishmedia.com and let us know. We love connecting with B2B executives and we love sharing their wisdom and perspective with our audience. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.